All right, here we are again, another week and um, another smorgasbord of movies. Indeed. Uh, and I use that word deliberately, smorgasbord, <laughs> yeah. because uh, our first movie is when, yeah, I, and you better like this movie. <laughs> I, oh, uh, boy. I'm just setting you up here. I'm feeling threatened. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so the first movie is a foodie movie of sorts, uh, East Side Sushi, hence the smorgasbord reference. And uh, it's also a, uh, a kind of a fusion movie, right? Because uh, kind of yeah, uh, it's about a uh, Mexican woman who wants to become a sushi chef. That's like the kind of the one line uh, plot summary of the movie. Uh, so she's uh, she's working with her father, running a fruit cart, and then uh, she gets a job at a sushi restaurant and has to. Break through the glass ceiling, both as a woman and as a Mexican woman in a Japanese restaurant, uh, in order to become a sushi chef and to pre- just prove herself in a sushi competition, televised sushi competition. Um, the deck is stacked against this woman. Yeah. Uh, and it's set in Oakland, so it's got this um, you know, local uh, interest. It, this is really an, kind of a, uh, an old-fashioned indie um, that's conventional in the extreme i would say really? you uh, think it is i think i think well, the tropes are conventional but yeah, the, i thought it was yeah, fresh tro- the tropes and- are conventional um and uh I, you one might even go so far as to say cliched but the uh you had to use that word didn't I, you? I did, you did. And, and the the, the dialogue is stiff at times and the acting is stiff at times but uh diana elizabeth torres plays the lead here and she's uh endearing uh she's a, a warm presence a friendly presence and then uh yutaka takeuchi plays the kindly uh, sushi chef who's sort of like uh, takes her under his wing, and he's not so bad either. But there's just something kind of lackluster about the uh, the dramatic uh, meat of this movie. Um, but it is a feel good movie. I think it's going to appeal to um, an audience that likes foodie movies, and and it does have that uh, kind of like Rocky esque, uh, you know, <laughs> climbing from the bottom kind of feel to it. But it rides this edge between simple drama and simplistic drama, uh, and that that made it kind of. Not my favorite thing. If you give it a little bump for uh, cinematic affirmative action, <laughs> uh, because uh, you don't see these faces on screen enough, um, you know, culturally speaking, and, and it's kind of a starter film for Anthony Lucero, who wrote and directed it. Um, it's his first feature film as director. So uh, I'm kind of on the fence about it, but uh, if you're feeling in a feel good mood, check it out. <laughs> I'll let you have the last word. Okay, East Side Sushi. It opens Friday, September 18th in the Bay Area. All right. All right. Um, Next up is Yeah, I want to know what you think about this one from the the infamous... M. Night Shyamalan, uh, The Visit. It's a horror picture from M. Night Shyamalan, and it concerns uh, two children, Olivia de Jong and Ed Oxenbold, brother and sister, sister and brother, uh, who go for a visit with their grandparents, played by Diana Dunnigan and Peter McRobbie. Their mom, played by Catherine Hahn, uh, the, the kid's mom, sends them off for a week visit with their grandparents. Uh, and things get weird and get weirder over the course of the week until they're kind of terrifying by the end of the week, which is as much as I could say about it. And it does have a, a gotcha moment in it that's sort of like, uh, you know, the, the what used to be expected M. Night Shyamalan twist. Uh, and that's probably the best part of the movie. This uh, is the end near the end. Uh, yeah, near the end. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and it kind of uh, elevates the movie a bit uh, because it's a kind of clever twist. Um, uh, but this is like classic M. Night Shyamalan in the sense that it's got these very obvious uh, character arcs where he sets it up and then he, you know, he kind of like tees it up and then he, you know, knocks it at the end of the movie. What, what uh, do you think of him as a filmmaker? I mean, um, he's he's. I thought The Sixth Sense was an excellent movie. Uh, everything else has been pretty iffy, um, I think. But uh, he, uh, he this people are saying this is a sort of a return, a to, form, return to form right. for him. Yeah, yeah uh, I was not really very convinced about, of that. And you're down the middle on this one. I'm too, down the middle sounds. on this one too. Um, I think you know if you like this sort of movie, uh, kind of um, a horror. I, I, I think as a horror movie, it's a little bit something different, which I liked. It's um, a domestic horror movie of sorts. It do, it's not the usual, uh, you know, a ghosts knocking around kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, I think maybe I'd give it an edge to to go see it. Okay, The Visit is now showing nationwide. 
we're going to shift into a little more positive here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just have a feeling. Yes, yes. I don't know why, you, but... You, um, you have a little bird told you. Yeah, uh, what, what, what is The New Girlfriend? The New Girlfriend is the latest picture from Francois Ozon, uh, who directed and wrote the script. And it's based on a Ruth Rendell novel, uh, also called The New Girlfriend. Uh, and this one is... Uh, it's, it's kind of a, a trendy uh, topic of um, sexual fluidity. Uh, that's what I can say about it. I, I don't want to give too much away because the trailer is sort of coy about what's going on in this movie. But uh, it begins with uh, the death of a woman. And then you uh, they do kind of an up thing. The first 10 minutes sort of show you the whole relationship of this woman and her best friend, played by Anaïs uh, de Moustier, uh, who's quite good in the picture. And... Uh, and her, the dead woman's husband, played by Romain Dury, uh, and the uh, Anaïs de Moustier character, she uh, makes a promise that she will look after her friend's widow and their child. They, have a, they had a baby child. And she has to, it becomes very difficult to keep this promise over the course of the picture because there's all these challenging uh, things going on, uh, sort of psychosexually. It's a psychodrama with comic overtones. And all of the characters... Uh, have these sort of mm, desires that are uh, latent and they have to kind of deal with um, uh, their changing feelings. Mm, and, cl uh, classic ozone, it sounds like to me. Yeah, 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 it is. It's classic ozone and it's complicated and uh, mm. and it's a fairly unique picture. Uh, there's not a lot of movies this year I've seen that are like this. Uh, so it sounds like you are recommending. I am. The performances are the good. The cinematography is uh, spectacular, uh, and it just it's it's just ozone running on all cylinders here. It works. If you like ozone, uh, I think you'll definitely like this. Okay, the new girlfriend. I know what I know what it means. I guessed it <laughs> immediately. Uh -huh. Okay, it opens this Friday, September eighteenth, in uh, San Francisco and Berkeley. <gasps> Okay, right. let's meet the Patels, shall we? In, indeed. In, okay. in the new uh, documentary film, Meet the Patels, directed by Gita Patel uh, and her brother, Ravi Patel, who also stars in the movie, in, in the sense that you could star in a documentary. Along with their parents. Along with their parents, right. So the, uh, the, the deal here is that Ravi Patel is about to turn 30, and he isn't married yet, and his parents are heavily invested in him getting married. Uh, and he's asking all these questions of himself about why he hasn't yet and what it takes to find the right person and who the right person should be. And if that person would have to be Indian American, uh, which, of course, his parents want. Uh, and uh, his parents were uh, the product of an arranged marriage. And they have a fantastic marriage, uh, by all accounts. And they're a very, very happy couple. And they're pushing for him to uh, find his wife through an arranged marriage situation. And it's really interesting for an outsider to watch this and learn about, I didn't know about this all, whole bio data thing where it's kind of a dating service yeah. within the Indian American yeah. community. Um, that's all interesting. I think if you're Indian American, you laugh with recognition at everything that's going on. And if you're not, you'd be kind of fascinated by this whole process. And then the characters are all just very likable. And it oftentimes these pictures are turned off to me because you can smell the fakery about them. They don't feel authentic. And this one, for, like, for the most part, it feels like, no, this is the real deal. This is a family picking up a camera and actually recording what's going on <laughs> as, as he... Uh, you know, kind of commits to to trying to commit, uh, when trying to find love uh, over the course of about a year, I guess. Um, so yeah, it's very funny. Uh, it's it's kind of you know a heartwarming and a fun romantic comedy documentary. So yeah, it's got everything going for it. All right, Meet the Patels now showing in uh, various parts of the Bay Area, San Francisco, San Jose. It opens Friday, September twenty fifth at the Camera Cinemas in San Jose. <gasps> So, so two, you're recommending all four, kind sort of. of yeah, sort two of. unambiguous recommendations for yes. The New Girlfriend and Meet the Patels. And then okay. The others might appeal to certain segments. That's East Side Sushi and The Visit. Indeed. Okay. And uh, next week, ooh, I, this this first one here, I'm hearing really good things about the lead performance. Yeah, Johnny Black Depp. Mass, mm -hmm. uh, starring Johnny Depp as Whitey Bulger. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of buzz on that one. Uh, I'm, I'm going to drink some whiskey before I go to see that. I hear it's very violent. Right. Yeah, yeah, okay. Anyway, and what else? Uh, Being Clear, uh, Scientology and the Prison of Belief. It's another Alex Gibney documentary. Actually, and I love doing this. I'm going to correct you. It's called Going Clear. Oh, Going Clear. I'm sorry. What did I say? Being Clear? I said Being Clear. <laughs> well, I was not being clear. Yeah. <laughs> you weren't. And, and what is the third? Uh, the third is Maze Runner, The Scorch Trials. Uh, okay. The sequel to the big, uh, yeah, 
Okay, youth, youth I'm, I'm going. I'm going to stop the psychological torture that I put you through <laughs> this week and say we'll be right back. Uh, that was Peter Canavesi, GradualReviews.com, and we'll be right back uh, <laughs> with more torture after these words. <laughs> 